Dear students, now we are going to discuss about absorption of water. What is absorption of water? That means water which is dissolving the salt which are present in the soil to be absorbed by the root and enter into the plant and tap to the stem and finally it is reached, reached the tip of the leaf as well. This is called absorption of water. This basically this absorption of water which will be takes place in two ways, two steps. From soil to the root hair, either active or passive. Then from root hair to the top of the plant by lateral direction to reach the xylem. That means first it is entering into the root hair, up to root hair, it is one step. Second step, from the root hair, it is entered to the xylem through outer epidermis, cortex, endodermis, pericycle and xylem. So these are all will be takes place lateral direction. It is not upward direction. Understand one thing. So absorption of water, the terrestrial plant have absorbed the water from soil to maintain turgidity and metabolic activities and growth. So this absorption of water from lateral side only. Lateral side means it is not upward towards the tip of the leaf. So only in the lateral side. In the lateral side itself it is takes place in two ways. Two steps. First water is entered from the soil to the root hair. From the root hair this is penetrated inside the cell. Inside the root. Inside the root means until its xylem. It, it can reach to the xylem through outer epidermis, then enter, enter into the cortex. From the cortex, it is entered into the endodermis, then pericycle and into the xylem. So this is absorption of water. This absorption of water, which is takes place in a proper way, that means which will be takes place but three ways. One is apoplast, another one is symplast, and third one is transmembrane root. So usually, usually water is first absorbed by the root hair and other epidermal cells through imbibition from the soil and moves radially and centripetally across the cortex, endodermis, pericycle and finally reach the xylem animals. So this is done by three different methods. They are apoplast, symplast, and transmembrane. What is mean by apoplast? First of all, you should understand one thing. This picture will be help you to understand. See, look at the picture. So, in this picture, it will be will, this will be helping us to understand how the water is takes place initial stage. So, this is outer side. This is root hair. So this is soil particle. In between the soil particle, water and minerals might be there. So this water should be entered into the root hair first. Then from the root hair, this will be traveled through epidermis, cortex, endodermis, pericycle and xylem. So this is a process might be takes place by three ways. What are the three ways they can be able to travel? Apoplast, simplast, and transmembrane root. What do you mean by apoplast? Apoplast, apo means away. Plast means cell. That means the apoplast consisting of everything external to the plasma membrane. So external to the plasma, this will be a, we can able to understand with the help of this picture. Look at the picture. This picture will be helping you to understand how the Upper plus, simplast, and transmembrane is takes place. Look at this picture. Number one, it is upper plast. Number two, green pathway, it is simplast. This dotted black spot, it is transmembrane. What is upper plast? Upper plast means outer side of the plasma membrane. That means through the place in between cell wall and plasma membrane 
the space present between the cell wall and plasma membrane sorry cell wall and plasma membrane the if the water is pass through this membrane this will be called as hypoplast so this water can will not be pass through through the cell so this type of pathway is called hypoplast then symplast what is mean by symplast the symplast are nothing but if the water molecule or water and mineral molecule which will be passing through root hair through the cell suppose this is epidermis this is cortex endodermis pericycle and xylem cell until it is reaching the xylem it is come across number of membrane it is passing through the membrane the previous one it is not pass through the membrane it is passing through cell cell wall plasma membrane and enter, enter into the cytoplasmic organelle especially vacuoles vacuoles are covered by tonoplast membrane along with the tonoplast membrane it is passing so it is moving away from the inner membrane it is not passing through the tonoplast membrane which one the symplast but the trans membrane which will be passing through this membrane so there are three method the first one is upper plus second one is it is going inside the cell but not through the membrane only through plasma desmata in between the cell so in between the cell such a connection or opening may be there this connection or opening are called as plasma desmata so the water cannot be able to move from one cell to the other cell through plasma desmata not through any membrane bound at organelle but the third method of plan transport of material or water which will be takes place through the membrane so it is called as trans membrane so these are transporting through the membrane like what you call tonoplast tonoplast is a membrane being around the vacuole so even though through the vacuole it is passing through and finally it is reaching the xylem so from the root hair to the xylem water material or water and minerals are tra traveling or pass through in three way one is upper plus second one is symplast and third one is trans membrane root what is upper plus so upper plus is everything external to the plasma membrane of the living cell so upper plus includes cell wall extra cellular space and the interior of the dead cell even if it is passing through the dead cell like what do you call the xylem is having various types of dead cells like xylem tracheids xylem vessels so even though they are not only passing through the space between plasma membrane and the cell wall it is also passed through the dead, dead cells like uh, that means the lumen that means the water is moving through the lumen if the cell water is moving through the cytoplasm means living cell dead cell means it is empty lumen so the empty lumen is also considered that upper plus so that means the upper plus includes cell wall extra cellular space and interior of the dead cell such as uh, uh, vessel elements as well as tracheids in upper plus pathway water moves exclusively through cell wall they are non living part of the plant without crossing any membrane such a type of movement of material is called as upper plus system the second one is called symplast so symplast means in greek greek is sim means within plus means cell so within the cell that means transport of material which is takes place within the cell so the symplast consists of the entire mass of cytosol cytosol means along with the liquid the salt content which will be moving through all the living cells in in the plant as well as plasma desmata plasma desmata is a connection or opening between two cells the cytoplasmic canal that is interconnect them so in the symplast root water has crossed plasma membrane to enter the cytoplasm of the outer outer root root cell then it will be move within the adjoining cytoplasm through plasma desmata around the vacuoles without the necessity of the cross the membrane they won't cross any internal membrane of the organelle like tonoplast or the membrane of vacuole then the third method is trans membrane the third step is along with the membrane they can able to pass so in trans membrane pathway water sequentially enter the cell on, on one side and exit from the other cell of the membrane 
In this pathway, water cross the at least two membrane of each cell. So transport across the tonoplast is also involved. So, so this is called as transmembrane. Now we are going to see about mechanism of water absorption. The mechanism of water absorption, absorption if you consider that, it will be having active absorption as well as passive absorption. The active absorption may be takes place by osmotic active absorption as well as non-osmotic active absorption. So as I said just now, the mechanism of active absorption means the mechanism of water absorption due to the force generated or the if it is utilizing energy in the root itself is called as active absorption. This is further divided into two types namely osmotic active absorption and non-osmotic active absorption. So according to the osmotic active absorption, the first step in the absorption of soil water imbibed by cell wall. So cell wall of the root hair followed the osmosis. The soil water is hypotonic and the cell sap is hypertonic. Therefore, soil water is diffuses into the root hair along the concentration gradient. That is that means endosmosis higher concentration of water to the lower concentration of water. When the root has become fully digested, then it, it becomes hypotonic and the water moves automatically by osmotically to the outermost cortical cell. Then it is entered into the cortex, then endodermis, then pericycle, then finally reach the protozoa, then metazoa. So as a result, what happened? The sap reaches the protozoa, the pressure is developed known as root pressure. This theory involves symplastic movement of water. But even though these are having objection. What is objection? Because the cell sap con concentration in xylem is not always high. And moreover, root pressure is not universal in all plants, especially in trees. Then the second type of theory is non-osmotic or active absor absorption. So in non-osmotic active absorption, the water even if the concentration of the cell sap in a root hair is lower than that of the soil water. Such a movement require an expenditure of energy reduced by respiration that is ATP, adenosine dry phosphate. Thus there is a link between water absorption and respiration. It is evident that from the fact that even respiratory inhibitors like potassium cyanide or chloroform are applied that decrease the rate of respiration. Then we are going to see about <coughs> pass, passive absorption. <coughs> now we shall discuss about passive absorption. In passive absorption, Roots do not play any role in absorption of water and is regulated by transpiration only. That means, what is transpiration? On the leaf surface, a whole like substances are present. They are called as stomata. Through the stomata, excess amount of water will be evaporated. So, when the water is evaporated, automatically it pulls the water. So, due to the transpiration through the stomata, Water loss from the leaf cell along with the a drop in turbid pressure is takes place. It increases diffusion pressure deficit in leaf cells and leads to the withdrawal of water from the adjacent xylem cells. In xylem, the tension is developed and is transmitted downwards up to the root, resulting in absorption of water from the soil. So this is passive absorption. The path of water may be symplastic or even apoplastic. So it is account for more than 98% of the total water uptake is takes place by this passive absorption. That's all about active and passive absorption. Now we are going to see another concept is called as ascend up sap. What is ascend up sap? Ascend up sap means so far we have discussed 
about how water molecule is moving from soil to the root hair then it is moving from root hair to xylem it is moving from epidermis then cortex then endodermis and pericycle so it is moving little by little and finally it is reaches the xylem so these are all will only in the movement of water in the lateral directions once the water is enter into the xylem now the water is takes place uptake that means from ground level to the aerial pot that means it is against the constant i mean it is against the gravity so water molecule moving against the gravity it is not an easy process this water is taking from lower level of xylem to the tip of the leaf which will be called as ascender cell so in the last chapter we studied about water absorption from root to the xylem is only lateral direction and here we are going to learn about the mechanism of distribution of water inside the plant now how this is takes place the water within the xylem along with dissolved minerals from the <coughs> from the root is called cell and it is upward transport is called ascend up cell so this is called as ascend up cell how it is takes place how can we understand how how this path of ascend up cell can be determined a simple experiment we can take a beaker containing a dye years in dye years in dye which is usually red in color just you can cut a plant like balsam plant why do we take balsam plant the balsam plant is which will be shown very visible when the water is the colored solution or the dyed colored solution if it is absorbed this dye colored solution can be visible through the stem that is why we are taking balsam plant just you can cut a twig of a balsam plant kept inside the Use an eye which is kept in a beaker containing water and use in dye. Observe it after some time. Then what happened? After some time, we can clearly identify and feel that the water is entered through this one. So the red color is visible through this plant. Take a cross section, a slight cross section we can take and observe through microscope. Then the microscopical view, which is very clearly. identified that the xylem's tissues are become dark red due to years in dye so that means the water is transport through only xylem so from this experiment we can be able to understand that transport of water as ascent of sap which is takes place through xylem we can be able to understand that the path of ascent of sap is takes place through xylem so this experiment will be helping us to understand very clearly that so water and minerals are taking through are passed through xylem or xylem membranes so various mechanism of ascent of sap is given by various different types of scientist in ascent of sap is the biggest challenge is a force we get to lift the water to the top of the tallest trees if the water is moving from horizontally or laterally it is not a problem but if the water is moving against gravity it is highly complicated it's not easy the process is not easy one and moreover even for a more than 100 meters tall of trees are also doing the same mechanism how is it possible how the water molecule is moving in the ascent of sap so various by this way various scientists have been given their own view about various mechanism of ascent of sap among them some of the theories are very vital force theory one by one we can see so basically how the water is takes place ascent of sap by various types of theory have been explained one is vital force theory second one is root pressure theory and third one is physical force theory these three theories have been explained that so this is a mechanism when it takes place 
by uptake of water through the xylem and reaches the top of the trees by various sites have been given. First of all, we shall see about vital force theory. In the vital force theory, we are going to discuss about there are two important vital force theory. They are relay pump theory and pulsation theory. The real relay pump theory was given by Gorlowski in the year 1884. Here in this theory, the periodic changes in the osmotic pressure of living cells of the xylem, parenchyma and medullary ray act as a pump for the movement of water. So this is why the water molecule is moving up. This theory has been given in such a manner. Then pulsation theory which was given by J.C. Bose. J.C. Bose, Jagadish Chandra Bose, who invented an instrument called Cruscograph. The Cruscograph is a device or instrument which consists of an electric probe connected to the galvanometer. When a probe is inserted into an inner cortex of the stem, the galvanometer shows a high electrical activity. J.C. Bose believed that the rhythmic pulsating movement of the inner cortex like a pump it is responsible for the acylapsa. He concluded that the cells associated with the xylem exhibit the pumping action. There is a water is moving. There is a pump the sap laterally into the xylem cells according to J.C. Bose through the due to pulsation theory. But even though some drawbacks are there with the vital force theory, which have been explained by two other scientists who are, who are called as Strasberger and Overton, experimentally proved that living cells are not mandatory for ascent of cell. For this, he selected an old oak trees trunk with when immersed in picric acid and sub subjected to excessive heat kill. Then all the living cells of the trunk is dying. But even though trunk when dipped in water, the acid of surface takes place. But he has explained that. So living cell, living cell alone cannot transport the water. Even the dead cells are also transporting water. So the theory is failed. One more objection. Pumping of action of living cells should, should be in, in between xylem elements and not on lateral side. So this is also another drawback. Then the second theory, root pressure theory. What is root pressure theory? Whenever the water is entered into the room, there is a pressure will be formed. This theory is explaining about this root pressure. If a plant which is watered well, it, if you cut a few inches above the ground level, after some time if you have, if is See that the water and a sap is exudates out with some force. This is called sap exudation or bleeding. Stephen Hales, the father of plant physiology, observed this phenomenon and coined the term is root pressure. And stroking another scientist is who was called stroking. He defined root pressure is a pressure developing in the tracker elements of the xylem. As a, result, as a result, a metabolic activity of the roots might be takes place. But even though this theory is also failed by some objections. What are the objections of root pressure theory? Root pressure is totally absent in gymnosperm. Then how, gymnosperm is also taking acid absorb. How it is taking water? One question. Some of these gymnosperms are having tallest plant, even though they do not have any root pressure. Now how they are taking? The second thing, there is no relationship between acid absorption and root pressure. For example, in summer, the rate of acid absorption is more due to transpiration in spite of the fact that root pressure is very low. So during summer, usually root pressure is very low. But they are taking more amount of water. But on the other hand, during winter, the rate of ascent of sap is low, but root pressure is high. But this is also fine. 
Ascent of surface continues even in the absence of root. So look at the picture. It is a balsam plant. There is no root. But even the ascent of surface takes place. That means ascent of surface continues even in the absence of root. Then how can you say that root pressure will be exit or helping or stimulate the ascent of surface? It is a failure. Then the magnitude of the root pressure is about only 2 atmosphere which can able to raise the water level only few feet only. But where the tallest tree is more than 100 meters of height, how can the root pressure will be making to water to going up? And it is a failure. So that's why we have come to the third theory is called physical force theory. So physical force theory suggests that the ascent of sap takes place through dead xylem vessels and the mechanism is entirely physical and living cells are not involved. So, the ascent of sap might be takes place in xylem vessels. The xylem vessel is dead cell. So, living cells are not necessary. The mechanism is entirely physical. It is not biological. So, various physical force theory has been given. One is capillary theory. What is capillary theory? So, in this capillary theory, a capillary is a capillary means minute pore. A tube like structure which is having minute pore, which will be called as capillary. So, this capillary of the vessels under normal atmospheric pressure is responsible for the acid absorption. But this theory was rejected because the magnitude of the capillary force can raise water level only up to certain height. But the ascent of scientists takes place more height. Further, the xylem vessels are broader than the truckets. So it is not capillary, it is broader, which is actually conduct more water against capillary theory. Then another theory is imbibition theory. This imbibition theory illustrates that water is imbibed through cell wall material. The cell wall material must be gelatinous or a gum like substances might be there, not by the lumen. This theory was rejected based on a ringing experiment. Ringing experiment means if you remove the bar, the water is passed through the xylem. So, the rimming rim have the cell wall, but cell wall is completely removed. Then, even the water is transported, that means it is failed. So, another theory is called. Cohesion tension theory and transpiration pull theory. These are com combined together will make water to take outside, I mean upward. The cohesion tension theory was originally proposed by Dixon and Jody. Again, it was put forward by Dixon. What is strong cohesive force theory or tension strength? Focusing means same kinds. So there is a force of attraction between same kind of molecules are called as cohesive. So here force of attraction between water molecules have strong mutual force of attraction called cohesive force. Due to which one water molecule can attract another water molecule. That water molecule can attract one more water molecule in such a way. Same kind of molecules can able to attract. This is called cohesive force. Further, the attraction between the water molecule and as far as the xylem elements is called adhesive, adhesive force. There are two forces, cohesive force and adhesive force. Cohesive force means the force of attraction between water molecule, same kind of molecule. Adhesive force means the force of attraction be between different kinds of molecules. That means the force of attraction between water and the cell wall of vessels. The material which are present in the cell wall of vessel and the water it is it is called the force of attraction between different kinds of molecules that is called as adhesive force. Both adhesive and cohesive force which are worked together to form an unbroken continuous water column in the xylem. The magnitude of the cohesive force is much high that is 350 atmospheric pressure and it is more than enough to ascend up shape in tallest trees. So this is maybe a correct way. 
Another continuity of the water column in the plant will be takes place by an important factor which can break the water column is the introduction of bubbles in the xylem. If you create a bubbles in the xylem, the gas bubbles expanding and displacing water within the xylem element is called cavitation or it is also called as embolism. However, the overall continuity of the water column remains undisturbed since water diffuses into the adjacent xylem elements for continuing as an upset. Another important concept that is transpiration pull. This transpiration pull is also the tension in the unbroken water column which is also can able to make the ascent upside. The unbro unbroken water column from the leaf to root is just like a rope. How? If you are pulling a rope from the base, it is easily come out. Similarly, the rope is pulled from the top. The entire rope will be moved upward. Similarly, in plant, such a pull is generated by the process of transpiration, which is known as transpiration pull. That means, on the leaf, lot of holes are present. These are called stomata. So, with the help of stomata, it, when the stomata is open, the excess amount of water will be evaporated. Whenever the water is evaporated from the mesophyll cells of the leaf, the intercellular space near the stomata as a result, active transpiration is takes place. The water vapor are then transferred through the stomata pore. The loss of water from mesophyll cells are causing a decrease in the water potential. So, water moves as a pull from cell to cell along the water potential gradient. This tension generated at the top, then the unbroken water column is transmitted downwards from the PTO stem and finally reaches the root. The cohesion theory is most accepted among the plant physiologists today. Now we are going to see another concept which is called as transpiration. Already we know that what is transpiration. So water absorbed by roots ultimately reaches the leaf and get released into the atmosphere in the form of vapor. You know one thing, how much amount of water is absorbed by the plant? All the water is not utilized by the plant. Only less than 5% of the water will be utilized by the plant. Rest of the water will be evaporated in the form of water vapor through the stomata. This is called transpiration. So, the loss of excess amount of water which are present inside the leaf through various aerial pores is called as transpiration. So, transpiration is a kind of evaporation but differs by the involvement of biological system. The amount of water transpired is astounding and the water may be moved through the xylem as a rate of 75 cm per minute. So, this is called as transpiration. There are three different types of transpirations are there. One is tomato transpiration, another is lenticular transpiration and third one is cuticular transpiration. So, if the transpiration which is takes place through stomata which will, which will be called as stomatal transpiration. Then, if the transpiration is takes place through lenticel, a lens like cells which are present on the bark of the mature stem will be called as stem cell. But the transpiration on the lenticular cell is very very less when we compare with stomatal transpiration because the stomatal transpiration is total water loss or transpiration is takes place through stomatal transpiration around 90 to 90 percentage in plant water will be evaporated through only stomata but only 0.1 percentage of water will be transpired, transpired through lenticular transpiration and the third one is cuticular transpiration 
on the surface of leaf and the external part of the young stem which are covered by thick cuticle it is a waxy substances which are made up by cutin so through this cuticle certain amount of water will be evaporated uh, it is around 5 to 10 percentage of total transpiration might be takes place through this cuticle so in such a way transpiration is divided into three different types namely stomatal transpiration lenticular transpiration and cuticular transpiration how the transpiration is takes place through stomata so in order to understand about the stomatal transpiration we should understand about the structure of stomata so this is a structure of stomata this picture will be helping us to understand about the stomata if we see the structure of leaf it is dorsi ventral that means upper side of the leaf and dorsal side of the leaf usually stomata are present on the upper epidermis so the epidermis are usually made up of by a single layer of parenchyma cells these parenchyma cells are interrupted here and there with small pores these small pores are called stomata a single pore is called stoma this stoma is surrounded by a kidney shaped cells are called as gar cells look at the picture so there is there is a pore a small pore stomatal pore this is surrounded by two kidney shaped cells are called as gar cells usually all the epidermal cells they do not have any chloroplast but this gar cells are having chloroplast that is why they are green in color around the stomata certain specialized parenchyma cells which are surrounded these are called as subcellular cells around the subcellular cells normal epidermal cells are there whenever the stomata is open the excess amount of water will be evaporated through the stomatal pore so in such a way the transpiration is takes place if there is any water is scarce inside the leaf then the stomata is closed so due to the opening and closing of stomata this transpiration is occur so various stages of mechanism of stomata movement is takes place how various types of mechanism of stomata movement is takes place we shall see one by one so various theories have been given that the stomata movement so usually stomata movement are regulated by the change of thermal pressure in gar cells whenever the cells are become turgid when the cells are absorbing water then the cells become turgid whenever the cells are turgid the stomata is open then whenever the stomata is open then water is evaporated so when water enter the gar cells it swells and it's unevenly thickened the unevenly thickened wall stretch up resulting in the opening of stomata this is due to concave non elastic nature of inner wall so there are two way it is concave it is convex inside concave outside convex so so this is due to concave non elastic nature of inner wall so usually the inner wall is non elastic and moreover this is thick but outer wall is elastic and it is soft so this is due to concave elastic nature of inner wall pulled away from each other and stretching the outer convex elastic nature outer wall of gar cell so this is making the stomata open and closing when is theory different theories have been proposed that regarding opening and closing of stomata the important theories of stomata movement are theories of photosynthesis in gar cells star sugar interconvection theory active potassium iron concept there are three theories have been explained that how the stomata close and open first of all theories of photosynthesis one more 
a great scientist, observed in the year 1856, that stomata were open in light and closed in night, that means dark. According to him, chloroplasts present in the gas cells during photosynthesis process. In the presence of light resulting in the production of carbohydrate. So during night time, the chloroplasts which are present inside the gas cells, they are doing photosynthesis. Due to photosynthesis, they can produce carbohydrate like sugar. So if the sugar is increased in the water, which are present inside the cell, which increase the osmotic pressure in gas cells. Due to the osmotic pressure is increased, it leads to entry of water from the outer cell to the stomata, stomatal cell, aperture. Then the aperture is open. So this is a method in which stomata is open according to one move. But this is why because the chloroplasts which are present inside the stomata, I mean gut cells, they do not involve in photosynthesis. Because chloroplast of gas cell is poorly developed and incapable of performing photosynthesis. And one of the gas cells already possess much amount of starch earlier. Then it does not need any new starch. The second theory, which is called as starch sugar interconvention theory. What is starch sugar inter interconvention theory? According to Lloyd, the turgidity of the gas cells depends upon interconvention of starch and sugar. It was supported by Lockfieldism. They found that gas cells containing sugar during daytime, when they are open, and starch during night, then they are closed. So, if the if it is having sugar, then they can open. If it is having starch, it is closed. So during daytime, it is having glucose or sugar. During night, they are having starch. That is why it is in daytime it is open. During night time it is closed, according to this theory. One more scientist, Irene, he observed that the opening and closing of stomata depends upon the Changes in pH in the gut cells. According to him, stomata open at high pH during daytime and began close at low pH during night time. So, utilization of carbon dioxide by photosynthesis during night period. So, if it is carbon dioxide dissolved in water, which will be producing carbonic acid, the pH increases. So, the pH increases during daytime. The sugar increase in some favor endosmosis and increase the darker pressure which leads to opening of stomata. Likewise, accumulation of carbon dioxide in the cell during night decrease the pH level resulting in conversion of sugar to the starch. Then starch decrease the darker pressure and gas cell and stomata is close according to this theory. Another one more thing. Discovery of an enzyme called phosphorylase. This will be helping us to understand very easily. In God cells, hence support this theory, the enzyme phosphorylase hydrolyzes starch into sugar. And high pH followed by endospersis and the opening of stomata during daytime. During night time, just opposite. It is vice versa. So under concept which was given by Steve, look at the picture. This equation will be helping you to understand how this process is taking place. According to Steve, he proposed that a yeah, glucose one phosphate, this one, glucose one phosphate is osmotically inactive. So removal of phosphate from glucose one phosphate, if you remove 
the phosphate from glucose 1 phosphate when the help of phosphorylase synthase enzyme the ph is decreases ph 5 then it is forming star then the stomata is closed if glucose 1 phosphate is there the stomata is open then the phosphate is removed by phosphorylase synthase the ph is decreases then it is producing starch and phosphate then the stomata is closed once again the starch is absorbing phosphate by phosphorylase enzyme then hydrolysis is takes place the ph level is increases then it is converted into glucose 1 phosphate the stomata is open so this is done by steel but even though lot of objection is also formed as you know that in monocars gas cells does not have any starch the gas the starch is present only in dicars di it is not in monocars and moreover there is no evidence to show that the presence of sugar at high at a time so since starch is disappeared and stomata is open and moreover this theory is failed to explain drastic change in ph value from 5 to 7 by changing of carbon dioxide so totally this theory is also failed so next theory is theory of potassium plus ion transport potassium plus ion transport is another important experiment which will be helping us to understand about another theory this is called theory of potassium transport this, the this theory was given by Levitt in the year 1974 and this was elaborately explained by Rothschild in the year 1975. According to this theory, during daytime in the presence of light, in gas cells, starch is converted into organic acid like malic acid. So inside the gas cells, during daytime, here, inside, the starch is converted into malic acid. The organic acid like malic acid. Then this malic acid in the gas are dissociated to produce malate, anion and H plus ion. So inside the gas cells, starch is there. The starch will be converted into organic acid like malic acid. This malic acid is converting malate ion and proton H plus ion is proton then proton are transported through membrane into nearby subsidiary cell then this proton H plus ion moving from guard cells to the subsidiary cell so this is positive ion H plus ion for the mutual exchange potassium plus ion is entering in cell so the protons are transported through the membrane into the near, nearby subsidiary cell with the exchange of potassium ions, potassium K plus ion from subsidiary cell to the gas cell. This process involves an electrical gradient and is called ion exchange. This ion exchange is an active process and they are consuming, they are utilizing ATP energy which are present during respiration. So this process is continuous and then potassium ion is increased in the gas cells. So increase in potassium ion in the gas cells are balanced by chlorine minus ion. So at certain occasion, potassium plus ion will be increasing in more concentration. In order to balance K plus ion, some Cl minus ion is joined together. So the increase in solute concentration is decreases the water potential in the gas cells. Then potassium chloride will be formed. The gas cells become hypertonic due to potassium chloride form. Famous the entry of water from the surrounding. From, from outside, water is entered. From the gas cells, the water is entered into the, sorry, from the subsidiary cell, water entered into the gas cells. Then when the water is entered, it is increased vector pressure due to the entry of water. 
then stomata is open. During night time, in darkness, during night time, the photosynthesis is completely stopped and the respiration continues with the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the substomatal sub cavity. During the substomatal cavity, carbon dioxide is increased. Due to accumulation of carbon dioxide in the cell, low acid pH level. Due to low pH level and a shortage of water in the guard cells, activate stress hormone that is abscisic acid is formed during night time. This abscisic acid is stopped further intake of potassium ion and also induce the potassium ion to leak out. So the abscisic acid which are present inside the guard cell which is making the potassium ions to move away. Then this is due to this potassium ion is leaking. Due to the leakage of potassium ion, the substitution from the guard cells, the water loss is takes place from guard cells to substitution. So loss of water from the guard cells reduces darker pressure and casts closer of stomata. In such a manner, the opening and closing of stomata might be takes place inside the plant. Then, factors affecting transpiration. What are the factors which are affecting the transpiration? Affecting means, here factor affecting the rate of transpiration means either increase the transpiration or decrease the transpiration. There are two factors. One is external from the environment, another one is internal from plant factors. Then, so there are, it is broadly transferred into two categories. External environment factors means atmospheric humidity, temperature, light, wind velocity, atmospheric pressure, water. These are all external factors. Internal factors means leaf area, leaf structure. So when our atmospheric humidity is increases, the atmos I mean the transpiration rate is decreases. Then temperature is increases automatically excess amount of water will be evaporated. Whenever the light is increases, the temperature increases due to this, the rate of transpiration is increases. When the wind, when wind velocity is increases, then transpiration rate is also gradually increases. If there is an increase in atmospheric pressure, transpiration rate is decreases. Then adequate amount of water is present in the soil, then excess amount of water is present, formed inside the cell, then loss of water will be increases by the transpiration. So in such a way, the external factors will be determined the rate of transpiration. As far as internal factors is concerned, leaf area and leaf structure. If the leaf area is more, transpiration is faster. And so, so zero fight reduce the, the, their leaf size. So during summer or even in the zero fight conditions, plant try to avoid the transpiration. So how much amount of water is available in the plant? They are trying to retain inside. So in order to that, they try to reduce the leaf into spine, thorn, in such a manner. The leaf structure. Some anatomical features of leaf like sunken stomata, the presence of hair, epidermal hair, cuticle, presence of hydrophilic substances like gum, mucilage, help reduce the rate of transpiration. In zero fire, the structural modification is remarkable. To avoid the transpiration, the plant like open shell, stem is flattened and look like a leaf, which is forming phylloclad. Similarly, claro, uh, chlorophyll is there in asparagus to modify stem capable of limited growth of looking like leaves. In some plant, the petioles are flattened and widened to become phyllode, like in Acacia melanocyla. That's all about factors affecting respiration, sorry, transpiration. Now we are going to discuss about anti-transparent, plant anti-transparent. What is anti-transparent? The term anti-transparent is nothing but, is used to designate if any material applied to the plant cell, if it is stopping the transpiration, then this is called as anti-transparent. 
an ideal anti transparent check the transpiration process but without disturbing the process of exchange of gases what do you mean the anti transparent chemicals are any substances if it is doing are stopping the transpiration they can able to stop the transpiration but they should not affect the exchange of gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen because this may affect the for rate of photosynthesis and respiration so they are called as anti transparent that's all about transpiration now we are going to say about gutation what is gutation look at the picture we can able to understand that actually we know about stomata it is stomata like structure which are present in the leaf which is making gutation especially in hydrophytes so which are making hydrophytes so during high humidity in the atmosphere the rate of transpiration is much much reduced when plant absorb water in such a condition the root pressure is developed due to excess water within the plants thus excess water exuded as a liquid from the edge of the leaves this is called gutation so gutation they may ask in two mark or three mark including diagram so this is the structure of leaf the tip of the leaf is having a garsel just below the garsel the loosely arranged parenchyma vessels are called epithelium so through this one i mean through this way the excess amount of water will be exuded to form a drabex the drabex will be called gutation you might have seen about some of the plant like grasses tomato potato brinjal and alocasia this gutation occurs through stomata like pore called a hydro this pore this hole like structure are called as hydro generally present in plant that grow in moist and shady places pores present over a mass of loosely arranged cells these loosely arranged cells are called epithelium with a lot of intercellular space called epithelium this mass of tissue lies near the vein ending so this is the vein ending just near to the vein ending this loosely arranged parenchyma cells which are present these are having lot of intercellular space these cells are called as epithelium the liquid come out of the head door is not pure water it is having solution that means the salt or the solute are dissolved in water which will be exuded outside along with the dissolved substance that's all about gutation they may ask in the two mark and three mark question now we are going to see about how do we measure transpiration we shall see how do we measure in the transpiration with various experiment in next class